Hello everyone, welcome back to Dankin Cuts. So I hope you have been having a good time since the IMO 2025. Now, after the IMO of each year, what happens is that you actually have access to the shortlist of the IMO of the previous year. And the shortlist is basically the list of around 28 problems or so, from which they then select the final 6 problems of that year. Therefore, we now have access to the IMO 2024 shortlist problems, and of course, we would want to take a look at some of the problems from the shortlist. Now, I picked this problem because the form of the question looks very interesting, and there is one more surprise that you will see when we go over the solution. Now, before we take a look at the problem statement, just quick 10 seconds to make an announcement that we have launched membership for the channel. So if you would like to support the channel or get early access to certain videos, do check out the membership on the channel page. Now without further ado, let us take a look at the problem statement. So this is problem A2 from the IMO 2024 shortlist. And as problem A2, we can expect it to be a relatively easy algebra. But still, this will be interesting and full of surprises. So let's take a look. Let n be a positive integer. Find the minimum possible value of s equals to 1 times x0 square plus 2 times x1 square plus 4 times x2 square plus dot dot plus 2 to the n times xn square. Where x0 dot dot xn are non-negative integers such that they sum to n. Okay, right off the bat, the expression over here looks pretty interesting. It's not very often you see powers of 2 as the coefficients. Well, let's start with some exploration. Looking at this equation over here, you might feel tempted to directly try out some inequality in hopes of finding a lower bound. Maybe this is just a simple inequality question. Well, the thing is that, uh, okay, maybe you would try Kuti sorts here, it's quite natural. It's the product of two terms, then add, add up together. So you have the summation ai bi part. And also, you know, you have uh, x square, so the xi square might remind you of Kuti sorts. But even if you apply that, you will realize you have a problem. Because in the equality case, you will end up with real numbers. But here, x0 to xn are non negative integers. Ah, so. Maybe any hope of using an inequality goes out of the window. Because this is very restrictive. It must be integers. Ah, but then you will be quickly led to some observations. So even though the integers are restrictive, you can use the restriction to your advantage. Because these n plus 1 integers need to add up to n. That's quite restrictive. You cannot have the integers being very big. Uh, or you cannot have all of them being very big. I mean, certainly there's going to be at least one zero among these integers because you have n plus one integers adding up to n. Okay, that's a good start. You know that there will definitely be at least one zero. Even better, you can actually uh, look at this expression here and realize that, oh, my coefficients are increasing. So in any optimal answer, we better have the xi's in a non-increasing way because if something on the right has a higher x value than something on the left then we just swap the two values they are going to sum to the same thing but now we place the coefficient of the larger value with a smaller coefficient instead so this tells us that in any optimal solution the x i is going to be non-increasing with a tail of at least one zero. Very good. Uh, this seems to give some structure to this sequence over here. Okay, you might be tempted to continue exploring to see if you can find out more information about the behavior of the sequence or the optimal sequence. Now, unfortunately, uh, if you're like me, you will spend quite long down this rabbit hole and not find anything very useful and that's when you might realize ah you forgot one thing about exploration you know the key thing to do during exploration phase is always to 
try small cases. Yes, I actually wasted so long before I remember I need to try small cases. So let's do that right now. When, when n equals 1, you have basically this problem over here. Well, there's only two options, 1, 0, or 0, 1. And you can just try both, or you just remember that it must be non-increasing. Uh, non so the answer over here is 1. Okay, let's look at n equals 2. Actually, it looks like you have more options, but it's not so bad because by the observations earlier, 2, 0, 0, or 1, 1, 0 are the only real candidates you need to consider. You can try both. 1, 1, 0 is smaller. It gives you a value of 3. Okay, n equals 3. Again, this might look pretty bad, but the answer in any optimal sequence must be non-increasing with string of 0. So 3, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0. Uh, 1110 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and you can try the three options 2100 0, 0 is the smallest it gives you a value of 6. At this point this starts to look a bit suspicious so well let's try one more to confirm our suspicion. N equals 4 this again looks like there's a lot of options but really there's only five things to consider I think around five. Four 3, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 1, 1. So you can try all 5. 2, 1, 1, 0, 0 gives you the smallest, and the value is 10. Wow, at this stage, if you're like me, I'm completely shook. Like, why is this triangular numbers appearing out of nowhere? And then I look back at the original expression here. There's nothing. Nothing at all in this expression that hints of triangular numbers. So, where did these triangular numbers come from? Wow, this is what a, what a crazy problem. Yeah, and unfortunately, you might be very tempted to try and prove directly that the answer is triangular numbers uh, by manipulating this, but you realize that wow, it's not leading to anywhere. So, if any of you can see the connection of why this expression gives the triangular numbers, let me know in the comment section below. But right now, we have to prove this problem. And so if a direct proof seems to fail, but you know that the answer is probably triangular numbers, what would be the natural thing to use as your proof? Well, the classic technique of induction. So we are now going to use induction on N to show that the answer is the nth triangular number. Okay, base cases, I mean, we have in fact proved until n equals to 4. So, base case part is definitely settled. And we are going to suppose that the statement is true for all values less than n, and now we are proving for the value n itself. Okay. To use induction, I'm going to have to reduce n to a smaller case. How can we do that? One idea throw away the last term. Okay, you know the last term is always going to be 0, so that seems like, oh, very good, I can cancel away this term. But your condition here is going to suffer because by throwing away the last term, you, which is going to be 0, you're still going to get n here. So it doesn't seem to be able to reduce the smaller case. How about doing something about the first term? Well, by the first term can be any value. Okay. But how about fixing the first time and then see what happens? So we suppose x0 is equal to k. Then we ask ourselves, what is the minimum of Sn under the scenario where we have fixed x0 equals to k? And then find that minimum. Then you vary across all possible values of k and choose the minimum of that minimum. You see? Uh, so it looks like, okay, fixing x0 is a viable way to approach this. And having fixed x0 equals to k, the expression to minimize becomes this. I basically replace x0 by k here. And the constraint is that x1 plus dot dot plus xn is now equals to n minus k. Well, have we reduced it to the smaller case? Maybe if you take out the factor of 2, you will realize that, oh, my coefficients matches up 1, 2, 4, and so on until the highest power of 2. Okay, looks like good start, but there is a catch, which is that in your original statement, you have 
n plus 1 x i that sum to n. See, n plus 1 x i that sum to n. But here, you have n x i that sum to n minus k. It would have been good if this is n minus 1 instead of n minus k. Or it would have been good if I have n minus k plus 1 terms that sum to n minus k. Well, we are off. But this is where you use one of the similar observations that you have. Uh, or rather, you use an observation similar to something we've noticed earlier. Namely, that in any optimal solution, so here we need to minimize the thing in the bracket because everything outside is fixed. In any optimal solution, we again need to have decreasing or rather non-increasing sequence with zeros at the end. And you notice here you have n terms that sum to n minus k. The last k terms will then definitely be zero in any valid candidate. All the other cases where there's something non-zero in the last k terms, don't even bother considering. It's not going to give you the minimum. This means that I can replace this question here where I'm minimizing the thing in the bracket with this expression where I basically throw away the last k terms. In fact, I can just throw away the last k minus 1 terms. And I, I only do that because I need to match the number of xi's to be one larger than this. So by throwing away the last n minus uh, 1 terms, uh, or rather throwing the, away the last k minus 1 terms, I do have n minus k plus 1 xi's here summing to n minus k. And of course, by shifting the index uh, down by 1, I would then be back with my induction hypothesis. Uh, so we have already seen what is the answer here. This answer is the n minus k triangular number. So basically n minus k times n minus k plus 1 over 2. Very good. I can now substitute that into this bracket. So then the answer becomes k squared plus 2 times that triangular number, the 2 and the divided by 2 cancel out. That's how you have this. Now remember, this is the minimum of s if I fix x0 equals to k. So now all I need to do is look at the different values of k and tell me which one is the ultimate minimum. And this is just a simple algebra exercise because I just expand everything and collect the terms to form a quadratic in k. So the question now is which integer k, remember k is an integer, which integer k would give me the minimum uh, value for this quadratic? Now, there are different ways to do this. You can find the minimum by doing like calculus or what, but of course the classic technique is completing the square. So here I'm just completing the square uh, by adding this term and subtracting this term and get getting my complete the square expression here. It looks a bit ugly, but actually it's not as ugly as you think. So now that you have completed the square, what is the value of k that gives you the minimum? Well, uh, just think about this quickly. If n equals to 1, it, this would be 3 quarter, and then it would be 5 fourth, 7 fourth, 9 fourth, and so on. So for 3 fourth and 5 fourth, the minimum k, uh, the k that gives the minimum would be 1, uh, and so on. So you notice that, well, actually the minimum inside this bracket would be 1 quarter, and 1 quarter squared is 1 16. So the minimum expression you will get is 1 16, cancels the minus 1 over 16 here. That gives you this very nice expression, half minus a quarter of the same thing. That's one quarter of that thing. Times 2, that's half of that thing. So you have indeed the nth triangular number popping up here. Well, that's all for problem A2. Now, the appearance of the nth triangular number is still very shocking to me. Like even after working through this proof, I still do not understand why the n triangular number appear. <laughs> so if you have some insights, let me know in the comment section below. And also what do you think of this problem? The solution is certainly short, but it is maybe not so straightforward to end up with the solution on first try because who is going actually to think of using induction right away, right? So do stay tuned to the channel for more math videos. 
Uh, remember to check out the membership and stay tuned. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.